Hello there, welcome to our channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC applied science and it's unit five chemistry and we're gonna look at naming of alkenes. So where does this fit on the spec then? So it's learning AMA2 and as you can see there, it's the using the IUPAC nomenclature. Now, if you haven't seen the previous couple of videos on introduction to alkanes and alkenes and also the naming of alkanes, I suggest you go and watch those first and you will find a link in the description below. So by the end of this video, you are going to be able to name these four alkenes. I'm also going to give you some extra ones to have a go at yourself and we'll go through those answers. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated. Please use a like and the comment features and let me know what you think. Okay, so some rules then. So when we name substances, as you've seen in the previous videos, we have something called a suffix, a stem and a prefix. So for example, we've got 2-methyl pent-2-ene. The 2-methyl is a prefix. The pent is the stem, which is telling us the number of carbons in the chain. And then the suffix in this case is now ene because of an alkene functional group. So the suffix is telling us that functional group. We're also going to look at these two names later on in the video and see if we can draw them based upon the name. Best start with an example then. So here we have a fairly straightforward example. So what we need to do is identify the longest carbon chain. Now, the longest carbon chain must include the functional group. And we'll see a couple of examples later on where that kind of can cause an issue for some students. But this one's fairly straightforward. The longest carbon chain is three. So our stem here is pro. And we know that it's an alkene. So we, we're propene. So it's propene here. And there's no side groups to speak of, so there's no prefix that we need to have. Um, you may see some textbooks call this prop one -ene, and that's to show the position of the functional group. But I'm going to argue that even if we put it here to the right, that's still prop one -ene because we do have to use the lowest numbers. And just remember that we can number the carbon chain from left to right, one, two, three, or we can label it from right to left, one, two, three. So if we do move that uh, double bond to the right, it would still be classed as prop one in because we have to use the lowest number. So if it's between one and two, it's prop one in. If it was between two and three, we'd call it prop two in. But as I've just pointed out, that between two and three would be classed as between one and two if we ordered it in reverse. OK, so this would be classed as propene. We don't have to give the number one. But if you were to call it prop one in, in an exam, you would still be given the marks. Slightly more complicated example, this one then. So again, we can recognize it's an alkene. So we know it's going to have the suffix ene. But what we need to do now is identify the longest chain. Now. There are several possibilities here. We could just go straight through the middle and that gives us four. We could go this way and that gives us four. There's also one other possibility, which is this way. Whoops, wrong color. Let me change that color. So we could go this way. There we go. So there's three possible four carbon chains there. Now I'm going to eliminate that purple one. And the reason I'm eliminating the purple one is because the longest chain must include the functional group. The functional group group being that double bond. So that double bond has to be in the longest chain. So we had two possibilities there. It was either straight through the middle or it was this way. And both will give us the same answer. So let's start by naming the red chain. So that's bute, so it's butene. And I do need to consider the position here. So let's have a look at the position. So we've got one, two, three, four, and I can number it in reverse. One, two, three, four. So this is bute one ene. We can't call it bute three ene 
because we have to go with the lowest number. So it's between the one and the two. The double bond is between the one and the two. That's the lowest numbers. So we don't say but one two in. We just say but one in. That's telling us it's between the one and the two. So but one in. And that's going to take into account this part of the molecule. So we do have two side chains here. And they're both methyl. So it's a di methyl but one in. And I also need to number the position of these chains. And again, because I've decided that number one was at this side, and then this was number two, this was number three, and this was number four, this is in fact two, three dimethyl. So two, three dimethyl but one in. If we were to name it using that other route that I suggested was possible, we will get the exact same name. So we go this way again, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. It's still going to be classed as but one e because it's still four carbon chain. This time the side chains are here and here, so it's still dimethyl. And this was number one, two, three. So again, it's still two, three dimethyl. So as long as your longest chain contains the functional group, if there is more than one possibility, you're still going to end up with the same name. So don't panic if that is the case. Next example, then. Longest possible chain here. One, two, three, four, five. And there's the functional group. It's an ene. So it's pentene. Now let's number them. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to call this pent one ene. Because the functional group has to have the lowest number. The functional group being the double bond. So I have to call it pent one ene and not pent four ene. So that's pent one ene. So that takes into account most of this molecule. We do have a side chain though. It's a methyl. Now I've got to make sure I get the correct number. Three. Oh, so it's three or three. So it doesn't really matter. But if these numbers were different, how do I decide which number? Well, we already decided that this was number one. So one, two, three. So three methyl pent one e. So that's telling us the position. It's not telling us that there are three methyls. It's telling us that there's one methyl on the third carbon. Next then, so here we have a cyclic group here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons in a chain. So it's cyclohexene. Cyclo, because it's cyclic. Hex because there's six and ene because there's a double bond, cyclohexene. Now, I think that might actually be beyond the specification at BTEC, but it's there. We'd rather be over prepared than under prepared. So there's cyclohexene. I don't need to name or number the position, sorry, because it doesn't matter where it is. If I was to draw the double bond here, then it's just the same thing that's been rotated around. All we've done is rotate it round. It's still the same molecule. So hexene, cyclohexene. Right, what I'm going to suggest to you now then is you're going to pause the video. And when you're ready to see the answers, unpause the video and we'll go through these. First one, be careful. So I'm going to do this one first. The longest chain is in fact four. One, two, three, four. It's here. Okay, so it's butene and it's bute. 2-ene. So it's bute 2-ene. There's a side chain on the number 2. So it's 2-methyl. The side chain is a methyl. So 2-methyl bute 2-ene for the second one. For the first one, sorry. Second one. Right, I've been awkward here because the longest chain is 5 right through the middle. But it doesn't include the functional group. So it's not in fact the longest chain because the longest chain has to include the functional group. So the longest chain this time is one, two, three, four again. 
number them one two three four or one two three four got to go with the lowest number for the functional group so this is butte one in so butte one in and this time the side chain is an ethyl group it's a c2h5 it's ethyl and it's on the number two so it's a two ethyl butte one in right the third one then longest chain that contains the functional group is one two three four five let's number them one two three four and five or in reverse one two three four five so this is pent two in So that's the pent 2 in there. And there's two ethyls. Uh, sorry, no, two methyls. So it's dimethyl. And I need to number the positions of the methyls. It's a 2, 3 dimethyl pent 2 in. Final task then see if you can draw these two molecules. When you're ready to hear the answer, Unpause the video and we'll go through it. Pent-2-ene, so that's five carbons in a row. Three, four, five. And there's a double bond between the two and the three. And then there's a methyl group on the number two. There we go. That would be classed as a two-methyl pent-2-ene molecule. Now, just a little tip. It's tempting sometimes or it's easy to make a mistake and put either too many or too few hydrogens on when we draw these out so a little rule or a little tip is make sure that all your hydrogens only have one bond which is quite easy to do and then though this is the one the mistake that people make make sure your carbon only has four and it must have four not three not two must be four so count your carbons particularly where you've got your double bond here look you've got one two three four bonds sometimes i'll see students want to put an extra h here and that would be wrong okay finally then two four dimethyl three ethyl oct three in that's a bit of a mouthful so oct is eight one two three four five six seven eight so there's my eight carbon chain a double bond between the three and the four one two there we go double bond there a two four dimethyl so there's the number two there's a methyl group, two, and a methyl group on the number four. Doesn't matter whether I draw these groups above or below. So, and then we need an ethyl on the number three. One, two, three. So an ethyl is a C, C. I'm not going to draw all the hydrogens on here, but again, just make sure you follow the rules. I put a bond to each of the hydrogens. Just make sure that each carbon has four bonds and hydrogen each has one again it's tempting around the double bond to put an extra one in there and that's it for this video I'm gonna put out another video which will be looking at naming of halo alkanes using the IUPAC rules